If you knew that, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. but UCLA has us right now. Bragging rights just earned within the last half hour or yeah. so. Well, again, uh, a little different, I guess the same outcome, but a little different look than a week ago. And after yeah. uh, last week's game against BYU, some people were wondering with a road game like this, how many fans, particularly those in the Austin area, would make the drive up mm -hmm. 35 and mm -hmm. come to this ball game. We certainly uh, did find some uh, tailgating before the ball game. We talked to a few of them. Here's what they had to say. The last time Texas fans tailgated outside AT&T Stadium, the Horns were about to punch their ticket to their second national title game in five years. On this day, before a week three showdown against UCLA, the prize isn't nearly as big, but the stakes are still high. We try to find a way to get head coach Charlie Strong's first season at the helm back on track. We you know we kind of redeem ourselves after last week, you know, and uh, you know come out and fight and try to get some confidence so we can win some other games. Austin fans who made the trip to Arlington acknowledge there's more room on the bandwagon these days, but this is still the only place you'd find them on a Saturday in the fall. These guys need to know that we travel. It's important that. Uh, that, that, the other, that the other teams know that we travel, that we're going to be there to support our team. We're somebody to play. But they say they know building Texas back up to the point where they can punch their next ticket to a title game will take time. I think it's even longer than long. I think it's a year-long process. I think if you're, you know, it's easy to be a good fan when things are good. It's tough to be a good fan when things are bad. But I'm a Charlie. I'm always optimistic. I'm 68 years old. I have to be optimistic. He, he was very optimistic. They were having a very good course, you're always having a good time when sure. you're tailgating with your buddies For before sure. the game and all that. But but they, they were standing with Coach Strong. The guys we talked to, they were they were excited and just wanted to see some signs of improvement. Right. Certainly you want the wins again, but you saw signs of improvement tonight. And now it makes you wonder or maybe feel a little bit better about some of these conference ball games coming up. Definitely, definitely. No, and I think that's what we need to remember with this team, I, especially as depleted as it is with the injuries and suspensions. Little patience, let this thing grow, and we'll see where we are. And, so. and this is what you'll be talking about a lot in the weeks to come. Now you got a bye week, mm -hmm. and then you go on the road to play Kansas. You never want to say easy or hard, but maybe one of the easier matchups in theory that they're going to have the rest of the way. So that's a nice two-week stretch as the team continues to grow. You got that right. All right, coming up, we'll try to bring you some of those comments from. That was that was fun to see. Yeah, what, what, what about your uh, key? What was, uh, what was the moment that stuck out to you? In well, <laughs> I got to get the bad key, I guess, <laughs> one of them. But. It's that 58-yard run, mm -hmm. the first play of the third quarter. You, you, you know, it's certainly, it's night and day in some ways different from what happened against BYU last week. Right. But the third quarter did come to bite him again when uh, UCLA has got the opening kickoff of the second half and the first play, again, scrimmages that run. They punch it in and kind of uh, take away all that momentum that Texas had and so much momentum going into halftime. For sure. Um, and, and, of course, John High is uh, back, at the, back in Austin, KTBC Fox. More of that post-game sound for you uh, back home. And, you, you know, these days you don't have to wait until after the game. With social media, you hear some pretty good commentary during it. it it's hard sometimes to, in the middle of a ball game, keep not put the phone down because you, <laughs> whenever it's a big play or bad play or whatever, you get a lot of instant tweets and you know people who you're following. Yeah. One pretty good one from uh, Big Mike, who uh, does a podcast I listen mm -hmm. to sometimes. He's pretty prominent on there. Right after that drive that UCLA had to start the third and tie up the ball game, he said, I'm pretty sure the third quarter has violated a core value, needs to be dismissed. Hey. Kind of a joke about what's going on. And then a hashtag we, we can't say on a family program. <laughs> but uh, funny commentary definitely going on during the ballgame. We're going to bring you some more of the, uh, the better tweets out there. He's been opening your eyes, pal. I know uh, you've been a little hard on him. I, I hope he's opened your eyes. Right, John? Yeah, I'll take that as a yes. Yeah, and, and the crowd was into it. They were ready with the swoops mm -hmm. chance. He yeah. was earning them. He and, did earn that and, first swoop. Absolutely, and, and we'll hear more of that hopefully as time goes on. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, in addition to the tweets uh, and the other social media posts we're talking about, we also uh, put out a question for you, the F1 Circuit of the Americas text poll. We asked you now three games in, and especially seeing what you saw tonight, how many games do you think this Texas team will win going forward? 43% uh, of you think five or fewer. Mm -hmm. I uh, think it'd be a real rough season on the 40 acres continuing. 45% say six to eight. Of course, again, six is that bowl eligibility sure. number. Eight wins would be nice, yeah. a nice year. And 12% of you think we're about to go on a run. Nine, nine wins plus, which means one more loss the rest of the way. Those are the people and, who, yeah, that were, were doing the swoops. Well, they're yeah, ready. They're ready. And uh, we'd be the talk of the nation, or the <laughs> horns would be the talk of the nation. I could say we. I'm a Texas sure. ex yeah, Saturday well, night. It, yeah. It'd be impressive. Yeah, and you, we talked about it in the press box. Bowl eligibility for this team is big, not only for confidence, but 
it's a young team that could use the, the extra rest. It's an extra month of practice, yeah. more or less. It's one last game for potential recruit. It's just momentum. You know, momentum is so yeah. important, and, and certainly for recruiting. Yeah. So, so now what? We're talking big picture. Nights like this. All right, Dennis Delapena rejoining you live from AT&T Stadium in Arlington with Dave Fralick. Um, final thoughts, I don't know, Dave. For me, I, I I think this is where I was. Maybe my bar was so far down with, with the depletion on offense. Uh, I really didn't give uh, UT that good of a shot, so I'm pleased, I'm surprised, and I think this is a good, it's a much different taste they're taking into the bye week than they did after BYU. There's no question about that. The problem with the bar, though, is that the bar completely <laughs> moves when you get in the middle of the game and you can hang and you're, you're right. winning the game and you're showing good things and then it's uh, yep. taken out from, from you at the end. Then For it sure. hurts, yeah. as it should. Yep. But but there are plenty of positives to build on and, and uh, they've got a couple weeks to work on them before Kansas. For sure. Uh, it's been fun out here. I, I will promise you, we're still working on some of that post game. Of course, uh, Fox 7 News is coming up uh, right after it's we Fox off, 7 so. News Edge at 11.15. <laughs> there you go. So uh, from here, we're going to say goodbye. News is coming up right now. Good night.